Hello and welcome back to what looks like the start of a beautiful day. If you watched the previous video you saw that I lifted the onions and now I'm in the car frame and that now drying away nicely. So I want to have a look at the bed that I've just lifted them from and tidy that up. Under cover there we've got the normal leaks and the pot leaks and these are the beds where the big onions were and as you can see there's not too much weed about so it won't take long to clear that up. And the plan for this bed is to just top dress it with horse manure because I won't be putting anything in this bed or any of the others because I'm definitely going to be start replacing the sides of all the beds come the end of September, start of October. I came across these and after having a look back through some old videos I found out there was surplus Charlotte seed potatoes that had got started that I planted earlier in the year. As you can see, they don't look in too good a health. They're a bit withered, but the cheats look quite promising. So I'm going to pot a few of these up, two buckets in fact, and hopefully these will give us something for Christmas. So I'm going to use these as second cropping potatoes. The compost that I've got in here is actually just come out of another bucket where I've uh, unearthed some Charlotte potatoes. So all I've done, I've added a bit of blood fish and bone and also a few chicken manure pellets, mix them in nicely and going to actually get them back in. I'll probably end up putting four tubers back in here and I think I've got enough for 11 tubers, I might do three buckets, three containers. If you are thinking about growing potatoes for the Christmas period, really you should be thinking about doing them within the next week or two because time's running out. Believe it or not, it's only about 20 weeks till Christmas. <laughs> So these are the three tubs of potatoes, hopefully will come up for Christmas. I'll just spin you around, I've weeded that bed, just dug it over. Now I'm going to give that a top dressing of horse manure and leave it for the next few months. That's both of the beds top dressed with manure now. As I said before, I'm going to be changing the net up there and just put a single net on. That, the one on there at the moment is the one which covers all the three beds. Well, good morning and welcome back to a cool and damp Sunday morning. First job on the agenda this morning is to harvest the what's left of the second sowing of peas. When I got here, I've had a bit of a shock. I'll just bring you in a bit close and explain what's happened. When I first got in, it was a bit of a shock horror. Turned around and had a look. And it looks like some of our rodent friends have already beat me to the produce. <laughs> not to worry. There's not many left on here, actually, so I'm going to clear this one up. The third and final sound along here. They seem to be untouched at the moment, but I'm not sure whether they've left them alone because they've not developed fully yet. But I'll have to keep my eye on them anyway. These outdoor tomatoes, so they've done really well. Some monsters on there. All these are Crimson Crush. And uh, more or less picking daily. Had to add a bit more extra support on one or two because of the weight of the fruits. I've just lifted the elephant garlic. So, I mean, there's nothing to write home about, as you can see. But they have split and when I look back, I think I planted these around about the end of March as cloves. So I don't suppose I've done too well. Anyway, I'm going to pop these in the shed, dry them out and save them for next year's crop. I've given these uh, garlic a little wash under the tap and they have come up nice. And when I lift bulbs of any size, onions, whatever, I do like to wash them before I actually put them out to dry. I think they'd look much neater when they've dried. So I'm going to chop these stalks off here and then I'll hang them in the greenhouse. A fellow plot holder, Andy, has kindly invited me onto his plot so they can film his uh, sunflowers. Marvellous display, you must admit. There's about five plants in here, none of them are staked, they're all like self supporting. And he does advise that they do make great cut flowers and last quite a while. I'm not sure what the variety is, but if he does let me know, I'll put it underneath. I do like to grow the big giants, but even so, something like this is a great addition to the allotment. 
Well, the jobs I've got marked for tomorrow is to give the brassica bed a good, really good weeding. But first of all, I've got to pop under the net and get me a cabbage for our Sunday lunch. bad cabbage not sure what the variety is but I'll put it underneath and so these surplus leaves will end up in the worm bin just gonna get a few carrots out for dinner as well to go with the cabbage Four nice sweet candle. <coughs> An early start this morning. Yesterday was a little bit of a washout. We had intermittent rain most of the day, so I didn't bother coming out. As you probably can see, I've partially drawn back the net, and uh, believe it or not, this is a brassica bed. With all the rain we've had the last few days, it's dampened the soil quite well, and it'll make fetching these and your weeds out, an easy job. And the other good thing of an early start, the sun hasn't come up yet, although it's looking though it might a bit later on. And in the meantime, that means there's no cabbage white butterflies around, which is a double bonus. I've been having a look, delving into the undergrowth, and I've spotted quite a few decent sized swede. In fact, and probably the best of ground since I've been on the allotment in nine or 10 years now. Same variety as normal, tweed F1. Saying that, there are quite a few other crops I've grown this year have been my best. I'm, the outdoor tomatoes are just amazing. I've had a really good crop of onions, as you saw in the probably earlier video. And having a look up here, the celery is doing very, very well, and also the parsnips. So uh, the only thing I've done differently, really, is give the beds a soaking with super soil, and that seems to have given everything a fair good boost. I'll have a chat about super soil a bit later on, probably in another video. Just look at these sprouts and all, they've got buttons starting to form on. And uh, to me, that's a little bit early for me. I like to see the buttons around about late September, October, and that usually comes just in time for Christmas. However, we can't complain. So let's crack on and get these weeds sorted. Deep down in the undergrowth, there's quite a lot of uh, chickweed, which comes out easy. But saying that, this year in particular, I've been plagued quite a lot with the uh, mare's tail. And that's travelled down the plot, down the site actually, from another plot. And it seems to only move in one direction. But the uh, secret with that is to keep on top of it. Where I've got brassicas that have gone over, this is like a, the Calabrese, which had about four attempts of flowering. I do like to get the roots out because it then stops or reduces the chance of any club root forming in the soil for future crops. As I mentioned earlier, as soon as the sun appears, the cabbage wards come out as well. We've just had a low fly past of a couple, so rather than actually try and battle against keeping them out and weeding, I'm just going to pop the net back over. This is where we are at the moment. Um, the other job I've done, I've actually put a stake in the sprouts. Normally, I do this when I plant out, but like other things, jobs get missed. <laughs> um, it is important now to put your stake up against the plants because if you do get any windy weather, it can cause the plants to rock. And the ultimate price then is for the sprouts to blow. So as I go along, I'll be adding spikes or poles into each plant. That's the, I think that's the third tub I've got of waste materials at the moment and I'll just show you something else. This thing here is a kohlrabi believe it or not. I've never ever seen one like that split into four plants. The all not lost we have managed to get a crop of some. A uh, bit light but nonetheless we've got something. Oh, 
Well, the sun disappeared, so I decided to carry on. And before you know it, we're done. <laughs> By no means perfect, but at least it's cleared the beds now. I say, weather permitting tomorrow, I'll have a go at the next one. Early start again. All that's left in this bed now is the sprouts along that side. And I've got a couple of cabbage, cauliflower, sorry, on there. Just to see how they get on. Just starting a heart for me at the bottom, not very big though. The big help on there, once you hand picked the weeds out, is using this uh, wolf hoe. And I went down about 20 to 30 millimetres below the soil level, and that just chopped off any roots that wouldn't pull out. Right, I'm going to get the cover back on now, and that's it done. A new variety of tomato that I've tried this year is this one called Summerlast, and it's a patio, so you can grow it in like small pots. The um, strange thing about the shape, they've got this point on the end of the fruit, and uh, it's quite hard. Imagine that cause a bit of damage if you throw it at someone. Nonetheless, the flavour is very nice, and I'll be growing it again definitely for next year. The tomato harvest is in full swing now. I tend to pick these probably once every four to five days. I do like to let the fruits get a good colour on them, deep red before I pick them. You can of course pick them where there's some green and let them mature. But uh, as it is at the moment, these are cropping really heavily. All of these are crimson crush. And as I said before, it's probably my best crop I've had since I've been on the allotment. These have far outperformed the ones in the greenhouse, both on vigour, the speed of growth, and also the quality of fruits. I've got some more in the basket here, I'll just show you. This is today's harvest, mainly crimson crush, and the ones at the front are crimson plum. Same as the crimson blight resistant family. And I've got a few more here, which have uh, actually took off the vine as well. As you can see, decent crop. The plum ones will probably save and do those for sauce, but I actually love the Crimson Crush. I can eat those like apples. <laughs> well, that brings this one to a close. I'm just ready to pop indoors now and cheer our lady lionesses on, hopefully to a World Cup final. See you next time. Bye for now.